Hi everyone, welcome back to Insights. Um, today's presentation we're going to be looking at a, a breakdown overview of all this uh, BIM 360 platform. So again, my name is David Purden, I'm a technical specialist with Diatech. And again, if you have any feedback or any questions or queries, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me on Twitter and on LinkedIn. My details are there on the page. So essentially what I'm going to do first of all is look at some misunderstandings of BIM 360. Moving 60 is only for the BIM manager, um, which is a bit, big misconception. Essentially, Moving 60 is for all members of the construction design team um, to give them access to data centrally stored across the project. There is a series of point solutions with a fancy name. Again, the name may be fancy, but the reality is that there's tools for specific purposes throughout the actual process, um, whether it be field, point, point layout, box, plan, building ops, or glue. BIM 60 is only for contractors using 3D and BIM processes. Again, it's for all design member team members for using uh, from pre-construction to construction right through to hand over. And the last two there regarding collection of iOS apps. There are applications that are web-based, desktop applications, and of course, iOS apps and uh, device-enabled applications, which essentially go back to the same central location. And lastly, Glue is BIM 360. No. As you'll see shortly, there's a lot more to it. So what does it actually do? Well, it allows you to accelerate project delivery and reduce your risk, and allow you to coordinate and connect with multiple um, members of your design team. So again, an analogy is a picture there below of a person in office and a person on site, essentially looking at the same um, information, but through different devices and different products, all the while connecting back to the same central data. So how does it do this? Enablement. So having the data centrally stored means that you can access the data from anywhere um, at any time. And any changes or additions made to that data can be seen as well. Delivery. Um, information can be viewed by anyone in the project. So again, by having it across multiple platforms and devices, it is easier for people to consume that information at the relative level that they require. Connections. Um, coordination and federation of information is important in pre-construction. And the ability to do that through a cloud that allows for relatively real-time collaboration and uh, workflows. Provision. Um, because it's a database and it's centrally stored, it means information matures and stays uh, relative from the initiation of a project right through to the end. And lastly, analysis and metrics. Um, the ability to learn from the understanding of a project um, at the initiation of that project through using BIM 360 means that uh, further projects further down the line and um, gain from that value and knowledge you've learned. So how do we do benefit? What are the benefits of deploying this? Um, delivering pre projects under budget. The ability to come under budget is a crucial uh, aspect when it comes to not only maintaining business but also gaining new business. The fact that you have the ability to maintain and control data, transfer of information, and understanding the metrics and analytics of projects means that you can actually project your budget costs way better and also allow for um, you know, um, fluctuations in price depending on the project types. Maximize your resources. Again, by having the ability to coordinate information across multiple disciplines and even subcontractor chains allows you to manage your resource um, capabilities and usage on projects um, a lot more effectively and making sure people and equipment are being used to the full potential. Increasing your profitability, again, by having more visibility on the project, it means that your projected costs are easier to maintain, and also make sure that if there are gains to be made, you have the visibility and information to do that. And lastly, and most equally as important, the ability not to sacrifice your construction quality. Quality is hugely important in this whole process because meaning consistency in that project quality in terms of the construction means it's easier to um, get return business. In terms of risk and risk management, there are six areas. Obviously cost, reducing the, uh, the potential of cost overruns by having proper visibility in terms of quantification and qualifying um, information across the project means it's easier for you to maintain a, a proper cost base. Again, we just mentioned their quality, you know, the ability of having the metrics and analytics to measure that quality is crucial and making sure quality is always maintained. Time, time management, resource management, all relating to producing projects that come in at time or under time. 
um, make sure they also uh, run the risk of projects not going over time by making sure you're aware of everything going on at any given time in a project. A huge one is safety. The ability to reduce the, the safety risks on a project um, is crucial in maintaining all the rest of the quality, the time, the cost measurements. And by having proper safety structures in place, that mitigates that risk even more. Consistent data and reliable data means that everybody is on the same page with data and is reducing the risk of people using out of date of, uh, of overwritten information on site. By having data that's freely available to everybody on the site um, as it's changing and it's evolving, make sure that the, the data is reliable in the sense that everybody um, is able to make sure it all fall in the same um, project and um, parameters and processes. And lastly, customer satisfaction. Again, happy customers are returning customers. And by allowing you uh, to reduce the risk across all these main areas, allows customers to have confidence that you will be able to deliver projects um, consistently with the same high quality safety standards and on time, uh, which means it will come back time and time again. But how it works essentially is taking the planning of the construction process and matching it against the actual reality performance. Consistently at the moment, there are, are smaller degrees of overlap. What BIM360 tries to do is make sure that that alignment um, is as is, is, is much as possible in its entirety and um, completely overlapping, which means that the planning pro pro processes and the planning program for construction that you create has been performed and executed exactly as been planned previously. And by doing that and by having a centralization of the information and the relevant tools to allow you to do that with terms of metrics and analytics, it means that the plan and the performance aspects of the construction are equally aligned and the conformance um, is matched um, to the initial criteria required. And this is crucial because when it comes to, when it comes to return on investment in the Boom360 platform and return on investment in the, uh, the products themselves, it is crucial that the processes in the planning stage are being articulated correctly, are being followed correctly, and what and equally is important, are being managed to, to the right um, consistency. And again, like I said previously, if that is maintained across a project, that's also something that can be maintained across multiple projects going forward, which means as a company, you keep a consistent um, platform in terms of how you actually approach construction projects going forward. Now again, the centralization of data um, it's crucial and key in this, in the fact that you don't have to recreate um, at different points um, throughout a, a project's uh, life cycle uh, information specific to a particular part of the process. And by having that information mature over time means there's a consistency to that data. So again, I, because we're talking about data, uh, here's an example here of what we're talking about, about transparency. Each of these metrics here are measurements based off of tasks, issues, and root causes and conformance checklists that have been driven through BIM 360 field and then passed out through to the field in terms of the subcontractors and those who are working on site. By them f facilitating that information, there's a consistent feedback loop of that information back to site managers and project managers, allowing them to verify and check the conformance and the requirements to make sure that the project is proceeding on plan or ahead of plan. So what brings this all together? Um, data and information maturity. Existingly, uh, previous uh, existences of this um, in terms of construction have meant that information in the pre-construction phase, the execution phases and the commissioning phases have generally sat in a siloed situation where information um, was not readily passed from one to the other um, with defined drops where things would have to be reworked. With BIM 360 and with BIM in general, what we're looking to do is to have the information pass from pre-construction through execution and ultimately over to commissioning and handover. With the information gaining um, the required level of detail and level of information as it passes from stage to stage. And um, to the point where on commissioning and handover, we have a mature um, model of the pre-construction construction phases, as well as the asset management, FM management information passed on. Um, on the commissioning and oversight, which means that as the information uh, moves from stage to stage, we're not recreating it for any point. All we're really doing in reality is managing the rich detail that's been added at each point and passing that through to the re previous stage or to the next stage, shall we say, sorry. And that's hugely important because it's really at that point where the information starts to move forward. So what are we talking about 
essentially with Boom360 is a platform uh, with various different tools that sit on top in that platform. So we have Boom360 Glue, uh, which sits in the pre-construction pre phase for federation and coordination models. We have Boom360 Docs, which scales across the entirety of the life, life cycle, which primarily is used for the dissemination and storage of the digital information being created. Boom360 Layout allows for the validation and verification of information as it moves from pre-construction to construction. Boom360 Plan allows you to schedule and plan out the projects in question. And then we also have Boom360 Building Ops and Boom360 Field. Building Ops is for facility and asset management. And Boom360 Field allows you to essentially enrich the models created through the glue process by including asset information, commissioning information, and facility information, which then would pass through to building ops for the duration of the rest of the life cycle of the building project in question. So the key element in this is the centralization of data. And the data that's passed from place to place is centrally stored. So here we have a breakdown of the spanning of that life cycle. So as you can see, docs goes from pre-construction right through to commissioning and over. Storing all the digital information, ver uh, version control, uh, allowing to do things like redlining and markup, sheet generation, sheet extraction, title block verification, things of that nature, um, allowing you to also control and uh, management of it. Glue is for the multidiscipline coordination and, and, and making sure you can coordinate your models across discipline as well as being able to do pre preliminary and project clashing um, across those different disciplines and moving that information back and forward to make sure that the model moves in, a, in the right maturity level. Plans kicks off towards the end of pre-construction where you start to schedule out how the actual uh, project will be uh, brought to site. Scheduling, task management, things of that nature can then be filtered out through the plan and then eventually passed on to things like field. Once we move to construction, we're now be looking at layout for the validation and verification to make sure that the as-built conditions in the model are as pre-constructed. And you're looking for deviations on plan where we can filter information back and forward. Field is starting to facilitate some of the rich data required for commissioning, handover, you know, bringing information online for, you know, HVAC, MEP information, anything that, you know, at the end of the day, once we move to the commissioning handover, a potential client and occupants will require um, facility managers specific, uh, facility management specifically would require to maintain and operate the building. And lastly, building ops, which is taking all the information being generated up to this point and put it in a format that uh, operators, owners, facilitators, occupants can actually use the information generated to help them use, manage, maintain the, the asset in question. So you can see here, there's a filtration of information from pre-construction right through. So key elements to it are the centralization of data. So on the left here, we can see uh, a model um, uh, in BIM360 Glue, which is viewable on a desktop and via a web, and there's information data sheets attached to it. On the right, we have the same model, essentially, being viewed by uh, an engineer on site, who can also interrogate and view the same level of information, model information on a tablet, which is crucial. How we look at that for say particular sectors is, so for example, we look at general contractors. If you look at the strategy and direction process for general contractors, they're essentially looking at ways to contain a cost cash flow while delivering a project on time. That's purely all about metrics. Because information is being driven centrally and people are, f are f uh, filtering into information constantly, there is a whole analytical metric engine in the background of BIM 360, which allows strategic planning and making sure plans are being uh, adhered to as best as possible. PMs, project managers, are looking to make sure the information is passed to relevant sub uh, level and, and uh, field execution planners to make sure that they're facilitating their jobs, making sure people are conforming to their relevant standards. And again, the centralization of information makes that crucial and you're having that on a day-to-day -day basis. Field execution, subcontractors, things of that nature, it's important that they have a clear understanding of what the project uh, requirements are, what their uh, individual requirements are, and how they intend to um, facilitate that requirement. And again, by pushing information out through BIM 360, they have a clear understanding of what's required of them. And we look at BIM coordination, which is really, really essentially looking at the as-built conditions, 
as well as the constructability model, and making sure that everything is conforming to plan and looking for any changes or uh, can be facilitated as quick as possible across that whole process. So you can see there are four different uh, aspects to, uh, say, for example, contracting. Um, all have individual needs, but all pulling in the same plan. And the importance of having the information um, centrally available is crucial in that. So let's look at a little bit into some of the details of these products. So we'll be looking at these in more detail going forward in the next coming weeks. But I want to just give you a kind of kick off of what's involved in each. So BIM 360 Docs relates to, you know, the increasing volumes of documents and version control and change management, particularly, <coughs> sorry, particularly when it comes to um, BIM enabled processes, uh, BIM enabled projects. The amount of information required uh, to facilitate that is crucial. The technologies are, are widespread, however. Um, some people are using, uh, you know, client-based uh, applications like, you know, Dropbox, things of that nature, Box, uh, Google Drive. They always use multiple formats and on multiple devices. This is causing an issue where things are being passed and processed through multiple different um, areas. So it could be through Dropbox, as I said, for digital files, for correspondence, it can be through email. So with docs, there are four main areas of central centralization relating to document management uh, electronically. Publishing, sharing, viewing, and markup. So if we break these down, um, for example, um, if you look at the publishing aspect of it, the idea of that is really to kind of centralize the publishing of all electronic information um, across a project, um, making that easily available. So again, it's a single repository, so everything electronically related to a project is stored there. Title blocks can be scanned to allow attribute extraction um, for coordination in the actual project structure for the folders. And lastly, you can have a sheet, uh, for example, sheet separation. So information within the drawing can be extracted out into sheets, whether it be DWF or PDF, and placed on it. Equally important is the ability to control access. So we have a document registry which will list out all the documents related to the project and, you know, standard stuff about dates and modification times. You've got access control, so you can specify who has publishing, viewing, editing or control to a particular folder or file. And version history also, so you can version files up and down. Viewing, equally as important, uh, the ability to view the same information, whether it be desktop, web, or in this case, tablet or mobile device. The ability to view the model natively, so 2D and 3D viewers for about you know, 50, 60 different file formats at last count. And also be able to look at that metadata and extended data within those objects. So the ability to look at object properties from within the model, whether it be through a tablet, web, or the actual native browser, um, is crucially important. And when we look at uh, you know information transfer, the ability for the members of the team who are not working through the standard design tools um, there are markup, um, issue management controls, and a reporting extension will look at, you know, who's made what markups and recommendations to the project, the, what issues have been raised, and how that will be passed through. Now, going forward, that will be more integrated um, into the other platform app, so there'll be a control mechanism across all of them. But essentially, what should happen is information that's been passed up from the desktop should readily be available to the tablet or to the web portal. Again, you know, uh, relating heavily on whether or not there is uh, internet access at any given time. But you know, everybody will be working essentially on the latest versions of files with the facility to go back and look and review at previous versions of files just for looking at contrast and see what changed um, from one version to the other. Um, there's full uh, accountability and traceability going back and forward across the file versions. So when we look at Glue, Glue, as I said, spans across pre-construction and into construction execution, which essentially, um, in a nutshell, works on multidiscipline coordination. During that phase where a constructability model is being created, it's important that each member of the design team has an opportunity to review, discuss, and analyze what's been done across multiple different disciplines. So again, we can coordinate singular models into federated models, and view that through the glue viewing tools and we can redline we can mark up and we can also view that again from anywhere even on an ipad with the glue application accelerated coordination so because teams aren't waiting for issues to be resolved um, at extended periods of time things get done quicker 
So if you look at a glue enabled coordination, each of these members of the teams working off a shared model can coordinate at different times throughout a general working week, rather than working independently and trying to do it uh, on their own. Layout spans across early pre-construction right through to the end of construction execution, moving into commissioning handover, which connects the coordinated model with the actual physical construction process in terms of looking at validation and verification of the as-built conditions against the constructability model. The important aspect of this um, is, there is now the extension of utilizing the latest technologies to expedite and speed up the validation and verification process. So using either a Revit, one of the AutoCAD-based products, or Navisworks, we can create models or point models from the coordinated model. We can upload that information to BIM360 Glue. And from there, once we've actually got the models and points up the glue, we can pass that through to the layout tool on the iPad linked to a robot or a toll station, for example. Then the validation of those points can be verified specifically on site, looking for any deviations or, or very, very variances between what was the uh, the design model and the actual as built collection that information then can be filtered back to glue where decisions can be made about whether or not the deviation had to be acted upon and then we can put that back into the relevant design tool and analysis can be applied on the deviation to see whether or not what steps are need to be taken in terms of steps one of the important features um, relates to the fact that this is a standard platform that any tasks or issues that are created during that process can now be passed on from Point Layout, which is the, the plugin for the design tools, straight out to field, where issues and tasks can be created and then assigned to the relevant um, person responsible. And then that person can then take the information out on site and work through the task or issue being, issue, uh, being supplied to them. As they work through it, the information can be then filtered back and the issue can be closed off or escalated for review and passed on to a relevant uh, team member. We move on to plan. Now, plan works from pre-construction right through to commissioning handover, which allows you to work through um, planning out the, the plan of work for the construction um, process in, in its entirety. So it allows you to do a short-term planning Instant updates to the shared plan across multiple disciplines, across multiple team members. Mobile tracking of the commitments, so everybody can view it from their mobile device about what commitments have been placed and what they've agreed to. And then the project management teams and the construction management teams can look at the metrics being supplied back from the planning as activities are being carried out, feedback being garnered and generated and passed back through to the analytic and metric engine. It means you get better profitability from your uh, site labor and from your team. It builds a culture and makes sure people take responsibility for their own aspects of the plan and also reinforces the whole concept of lean construction where you know if they all if the process is adding value then you know it's clearly not the right process in question and the analytics will allow you to measure that as well. When you look at field, field allows you to take the glue information, the federated model, the, the, the constructability model and start to improve on the informatics being supplied from that model. So we start to look at the commissioning side, the uh, handover, and you know how look at the progression. So all members of the team can use this, from site management, project management, right through to owners, stakeholders, and general contractors. We can create tasks, issues, and checklists that relate to quality management, safety documents, progress photos, commissioning, and handover requirements for the final deliverable enables uh, models um, on site and then link the external data that's been measured to the model. Get real-time project insights to analytical reporting and dashboards, which is crucial. So as the information is being passed through to the model, uh, through to, uh, to, it can be captured and worked on um, in real time. So common elements of this is informatics, uh, analytics, um, and essentially because the data is live, Things like root cause detail can be captured, the, you know, weather snapshots as things have been progressing on site, which is all crucial information when it comes to towards the handover and commissioning side of a project because it allows you to make uh, best decisions. 
And the last one I want to look at uh, briefly is building ops, which streamlines the whole handover um, process for everything that's been generated up to this point through pre-construction and construction execution. All that rich data and all that rich information um, has now been able to be ported over to the actual life cycle management of the project. So same information that's been generated, that's been passed through field and glue and you know worked through plan and everything else can now be passed through to building up so maintenance teams can you know supply information to occupants, maintenance managers, um, allowing them to raise issues, check of information, check the warranty status information, check the previous history of uh, field asset data to see whether or not something has to be uh, worked on or be connected to uh, to facility and change. So the metrics stored in that allows the you know it allows the information to be actioned very very quickly. You know owners can do day one um, turnkey maintenance um, with the, the actual asset information that's been collected as the progression of the project has gone. And also helps contractors um, you know service information equipment uh, requirements in terms of warranty and maintenance and checklists. And it, you know, it reduces the unnecessary un, un, uh, expenses of things failing down. If you have clear understanding of uh, you know the life uh, expi lifespan and expectancy of the equipment on site, and a new uh, in, uh, a new innovation um, in this whole area is a thing called panoramic power, which allows you to instigate things like predictive maintenance. So essentially, with predictive maintenance, um, utilizing the information, auto information, asset information, and ops being connected to, to panoramic power sensors, which can be connected to any uh, piece of equipment, which will allow you to uh, set parameters about sub-performance. That sub-performance can then be flagged back through building ops, which means that you know, there's a potential or a predicted failure may occur. Actions can be taken at an earlier time in a more cost-effective way without having to wait for a particular piece of equipment to actually fail outright. So, Again, this is just kind of an outline of BIM 360, just to kind of whet the appetite of what's involved in the product. Over the next couple of weeks and months, um, we're going to be looking at each of these products in a lot more detail individually and collectively, uh, looking at interoperability and workflow between them. But essentially, what BIM 360 will allow you to do is uh, generate an alignment between planning and performance and allowing you to mit mitigate uh, risk circumstances um, due to things like outdated data or inaccurate project data. But I'd also highlight the fact that it also allows you to leverage better value on your projects. So, like I said, just an intro and a breakdown of Print360. We'll be looking at more in detail in the coming weeks. And uh, thanks for viewing. Details on supplied for if you can contact us. Uh, if there's any questions or any further information requirements, um, please feel free to let us know. And uh, I'll, look, I'll look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. Thanks again. Bye.